Coming up, I am out with a world champion shot going pheasant shooting. We give away Andy Crow's shotgun, his Blazer F16. And Andy has a word of warning for anyone mixing up their cartridges. We've got news, we've got hunting YouTube. Let's get the 2020s off to a roaring start. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. landed a pheasant in Holly. One of my pheasants dropped in a tree, the other one fell out. So I worked down to go and uh, retrieve it. But because it was so far back in the tree, two bullets weren't enough. So I got the nephew taken out because I missed a sitter. Okay, so they're giving you a hard time because you missed? Yeah, missed a sitter, <laughs> quite literally. Never mind, Amy, it's a Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did they pick on you because you're a girl? Um, I think so, and then... Did they pick on you because you're a world champion? No. <laughs> Definitely not. Do they pick on you because you're Phil's daughter? Yeah, that is. I think that's mainly it. Mainly it. But most of most he gets most of the grief as well. So. Amy's dad, Phil, runs this shoot. This is Penhouse Shoot Estate. Um, it's in the Chilterns near Amersham, and we are on a pheasant shoot. Only a small syndicate day. But I was lucky enough to get Dad's peg. This is run on about three and a half thousand acres, um, owned by Lord and Lady Howe. I've been on the estate for 40 years. Um, th this was a very big prestige shoot, um, which closed down maybe five, six years ago. Then we had a break, and it, we took it over a sort of, uh, three years, three years ago. And we just do 100 bird days um, with a very small syndicate. Now you're looking a bit sideways because you're expecting a bird to fly over anything, yeah. and I'm in the way. No, that's alright. You're fine. We'll we'll we'll, work, we'll come to that when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> If, if the camera suddenly drops down, <laughs> you, will you know what's happened, yeah. Bird yeah. yeah, this year's been really good. I, I didn't actually expect to win the World Championships when I went out to Hungary because uh, the couple of days before we actually flew out, I changed my whole stock and with Ed Solomons, and we, I probably shot the gun about 250 targets with the gun, and I went out just not knowing. Sorry, there's loads of birds moving. You were um, shooting, uh, you shot 250? Yeah, 250 clays before I actually uh, left for Hungary. So I was expecting to not really be up there, but I was looking forward to going, obviously. as for the experience, but um, yeah, I had no intentions of winning the thing. <laughs> and it started, I was doing day by day and I was like, oh, I'm not doing too badly, not doing, I don't tend to look at the scores, so I was a bit like, I'll be somewhere near, um, but it was it's the last layout. I shot a 25 on my first layout and then a 20 on the second. And I thought I'd like complete on the last layout. I thought I'd ruined the whole thing. I was like, oh, I just walked off in a strop. I was like, no, don't talk to me. No one talked to me. And then there was actually the Cypriot guys that were like, no, you've you've won it. I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> so yeah, it was a good experience, and I think it made Dad cry anyway. Oh, very, very proud dad, yeah. Um, yeah, so couldn't have asked for anything better, any better, really. <laughs> you said you sh possibly even shed a tear in Hungary? Yes, I might well have done. <laughs> Especially when the national anthem started, yeah. yeah. Amy won the World Compact Sporting Ladies Championship in Hungary at the end of August 2019. Whatever they say to Amy's face, other guns are humbled when they're shooting next to her. Yeah, I finished that one off. Thought it better. Save the dog's legs. Now, Amy uses one gun for clays and pheasants. She found one she likes and she's sticking with it. Yeah, I shoot the same gun at everything, no matter what it is. <laughs> and have you always shot that one? Yeah. And uh, I've had this gun, uh, I think 2014 maybe. I've always had that same make model. 
just because I've always got on with it and there's no point changing, no point changing something that's not broken. So. It's a Browning 725. Yeah, it was one of their newest guns when, when it came out and Mark Lachat was like, you can have whatever gun you want, um, just choose whatever gun you want you're comfortable with. You can try them because I was in France at the time when they said which gun would you like. So I went and uh, shot a few of the guns and I liked the weight and the feel of the 75. But we're not with, um, with my gun, I've always had the palm swell taken off because I've got quite small hands. So I've always just had a nice skinny um, palm swell. So I've always had like maybe like a hunter stock on it because they fit the action. So we've always, it's always been a mix and match, but if someone said, oh, what gun is shooting? I've always been like, oh, 75, just because it's easier. But no, it, I've always, I, mean, I like the wood out of it, because it's a nice quality. I've got a grade five, so it's, it's nice. Well, I think I was shooting a 12 bolt when I was probably about 10 or 11. Okay. Um, so, because I started shooting when I was eight, so obviously I started shooting with 4, 10, then 28, 20, 20 ball sort of thing. And then I think, because I started shooting competitions quite quickly yeah. with Cheryl, I thought, they, they sort of soon tried to push me on to a, a 12 bore as soon as, as soon as I was able to sort of take it. I, I used to shoot before I had the sponsorship deal with Brown and I used to shoot a 5 to 5. Um, but I just thought I like the idea of the black action and uh, things like that. So I just thought I'll go for that one and see how I got on and obviously it works. <laughs> and what do you do by way of chokes? I just leave everything. I don't change any of my chokes. I just whatever is in there. I've got half and half. And, uh, no, three three quarters. So I just leave them in there and just shoot that. And people get very excited about chokes. And yeah. I'm very depressed to hear that you don't change yours. I don't change mine at all. No. Some people sometimes that someone's like, "What's in your chokes?" I'm like, "I don't know." Dad put them in there. They to stay there. <laughs> okay. So we check with Phil and those viewers keen on choke technology will now break down sobbing for Amy doesn't know what chokes she has. She just shoots straight. So we just discovered your chokes are actually half and half. Half and half, yeah. That's what Dad put in, so... So it doesn't really matter, does it? No. Nope. You don't care Doesn't bother me, are. no. <laughs> <laughs> you realise the entire choke industry is on its knees crying now. <laughs> like the points aren't true. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing you can't help but notice on drives here is the amount of deer breaking cover. Later on, we plan to walk these same drives with a rifle to look for a cull animal for Amy to shoot. They will get a bit spooked, but hopefully, because we've done the drives where we're going a little bit earlier, it should be calmed down, hopefully, a little bit. But we're going to try in the woods first, hopefully get them on the way, because obviously the weather's not great. So hopefully they'll be tucked up in the woods somewhere. We finish our pheasant and partridge day, and Amy goes straight on to deer stalking. This is a Browning X-Bolt rifle with a kite scope. She checked the zero at lunchtime. And now she is carrying it through the woods with boyfriend Henry by her side. Even though the beaters have been through these woods, they did it in an early drive this morning and it has already filled up with deer. The Munchak are the first to arrive and we soon see these active little deer trotting through the cover. One animal heads broadside onto us, moving left-handed. Amy has the rifle on it, but it dodges behind cover and when she gets a clear line of sight on it, she's not happy with her aim. It is soon heading for freedom on the other side of the wood. The second animal is slower and for the second time today, Amy has a problem with holly, for it is in the middle of a big holly bush that the deer decides to hold up and sit out the rain. We are losing the light, but Amy is certain it will break cover soon. We stalked him down and he was walking through, he was coming in lovely, got up on the sticks and then he ended up in a, it started to rain, don't blame him, he ended up in a holly bush for about five or ten minutes and then he was playing tricks with us, he looked like he was walking towards us and then he ended up about 20 metres to the left, which he didn't expect. <laughs> yeah, happy about that, he was doing my head in so glad I got him. <laughs> You've had a very sporting day, you've had your pheasants, yeah. <laughs> and deer. I mean, is, this what, is this what every day is like here? In no, it's not, it's not always like this. We usually try and leave the deer if it's been, um, if we've had a shoot day, but. But uh, it's just, a, I mean, it must have been the most amazing place to grow up. Yes, yeah, so it's been lovely. It's been, it's, it's just beautiful around here, I think. And it's, we've got such a lovely pheasant shoot where a lot of scenery is lovely as well. If you wanted to get into shooting, I mean, do you have to have 
kind of childhood you have? No, not at all. I mean, I know people that don't don't do game shooting at all, and they love clay shooting. But if they ever want to, like, shoot a deer or some pheasants, whatever, they're more than welcome to just get in contact with some people, the right people, and then you're away. It's a very welcoming sport. It is a very welcome sport. They love love new faces and young people, especially young little kids. I remember I was, I was picking up with my granddad at four and a half, so. <laughs> We head for the dead animal and Henry gallantly gralics it. Yeah, just passed my DSC too. I still make Henry gallic beer though. Well, I was going to say, it was <laughs> <laughs> very gentleman. <laughs> that rifle. I've got one on the way from Browning. Because I actually chose the Grey 5 because it's sort of, the wood sort of matches my my shotgun. So I've got the uh, 6.5 Creedmoor coming. Yeah. So you, you're a 6.5 more person. I'll take all the. Uh, all the uh, complaints and everything about the Creedmoor. It has been a glorious day in the Chilterns. A hundred birds shot, one Munchak stalked, one world champion, one proud dad, great fun, good company. And thanks to Browning for sending us to make this film. For more about Amy's 725 and Xbolt, have a look at browning.eu. Thanks, Amy and Phil, for a wonderful day out. Now, there has been some excitement amongst Field Sports Channel viewers about a prize we recently put up. It's Crow's F-16 Shotgun Plus, a pigeon shooting experience where you're going to get to spend time with Andy, building hides and having a go with your new prize. Here's Andy on the subject. Well, what sort of feedback have you had from the office? Oh, crazy. It's it, it, the, the night you uh, went out on field sports, it just, my Instagram was going crazy. I was just watching it, bosh, 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 just going on and on comments and that. No, it's really nice what some of the people were saying, so good luck to whoever gets it. It's a good prize to win. Didn't you carve your name on it before it went out? Oh, I should have done, shouldn't I? But no, it's still in my cabinet at the moment. I think whoever wins, it's going to come and get it off of me, I think. Well, they got the opportunity to, so be quite nice to meet someone who gets it. But... Well, good luck to all of you. And there are a lot of you. I've got more than 6,000 entrants here on my special randomising app on my phone. So I'll click on that. There's, there's loads of you now. You can see yourselves. Well, you can't see yourselves, you're scrolling through too quickly. And I'm going to press the button choose to choose a winner. Here it is, choose. And the lucky winner is, say name. Craig Gibson, great prize for Christmas, Facebook. Craig, Craig Gibson, who entered on Facebook with the words, great prize for Christmas. Thank you, Craig. We'll be in touch with you and you will be on your way down to Crow to pick up your prize before long, I hope. And I expect we'll be filming that too. Now to less of an obvious winner. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. The Antis' favourite day out of the year has passed with the predictable Boxing Day Hunt meet bashing. The Cheshire Hunt monitors forced the Cheshire Hunt to abandon its 250-year-old traditional start point from Tarpoily High Street. The Antis used a freedom of information request to show they hadn't applied for the correct health and safety paperwork from the local council. To the dismay of the Antis, the hunt went ahead and met in a private field by Tarpoily Church, just metres from the High Street. Meanwhile, the apprentice's Lottie Lyon has shown her support for the hunting community. The reality TV star shared a picture to her Instagram account saying she wished she was on horseback joining the others riding. Predictably, aunties have taken to trolling her account, but Lottie's come back fighting. And you can read her response on our Field Sports News Facebook page. And here are some great photos from the East Essex Foxhounds Boxing Day meet, led by huntsman Gary Thorpe, with not an auntie in sight. It may be a new year, but it's the same old faces. Chris Packham is in the headlines again. This time he's packing his own pockets with cash by leading expensive expeditions to the Falkland Islands. For a mere £7,000, excluding flights, you can holiday with Packham and enjoy an itinerary which includes penguins, South Georgia, penguins, Port Stanley and more penguins. Even with globe trotting and moonlighting for elite tour agencies, Packham's quick to flight shame UK travellers, reminding us that flying is bad for the environment. A tweet has landed a barrister in hot water with the RSPCA. Jolyon Morm QC was inundated with comments and calls for his arrest after tweeting, 
Already this morning, I have killed a fox with a baseball bat. How's your Boxing Day going? However, government guidelines state that if a fox is caught in a trap or a snare on a person's property, they are allowed to kill it humanely. Staying with the RSPCA and they've been rescuing deer from rivers. The animal charity says the deer got trapped on the bank of the river Irwell in Salford after being washed downstream. After a four hour rescue effort, the deer were released, but only after the charity named them after Santa's reindeers, Prancer, Dancer, Dasher and Blitzen. We hear a lot about deer road traffic accidents, but rarely do we see the graphic reality. A family from Michigan had a lucky escape after an oncoming car struck a deer and flung it through their windscreen. Staying in the US and authorities have ordered a two day boar control program after a fatal attack. Houston police insisted it was not a hog hunt in response to questions from excited social media users. The programme came a month after 59-year-old Christine Rollins was killed by boar. A local trapper recommended people put up electric fences and carry guns just in case. And if they needed to flee rampaging packs of pigs, they should stay near trees. Authorities in New Zealand say the country will be a safer place after gun owners handed in more than 50,000 firearms. However, critics of the buyback programme say police have only managed to collect about a third of the weapons that were outlawed after the Christchurch massacre. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern continues to push a new set of gun reforms through Parliament, which includes a registry to monitor every firearm legally held in New Zealand. Thanks to Martilla Marco for the story. A tough pack dog training programme is achieving remarkable results against poaching in South Africa's Kruger National Park. Trained by Texan Joe Braman, the pack dogs have helped to catch 54% of the known poachers in the park. It's a marked improvement from the 3 to 5% of their standard canine units. Other conservancies in Africa are now considering using pack dogs as part of their anti-poaching strategy. Illustrating that poaching is an international problem, Here's news from Russia. Federal agents and members of the National Guard have smashed a wildlife smuggling ring after seizing a vessel and recovering 10 Jer falcons, a bird of prey listed in Russia's Red Book of Endangered Species. They've been taken to Elizovsky Zoo, where ornithologists will decide whether to release them. Can you help with locating some missing working dogs? Four dogs have been stolen from East Noyle and Hinden areas of southwest England. Norma, Billy, Bailey and Holly were last seen on the 23rd of December. If you have any information, please contact Dog Loss and help them get reunited with their owner. One of Scotland's largest landowners is calling for Scottish natural heritage to be prosecuted after they injected poison into hundreds of trees. Sir Malcolm Colquhoun, Laird of Luss Estates, says SNH culled 400 beech trees in a matter of days after they began work to remove invasive species such as rhododendron. Although SNH issued an apology last year and have agreed to pay reparations, they face mounting accusations that they've been felling trees without the correct licenses to avoid restrictions, which would have been imposed by the Forestry Commission. After nine deadly bear attacks in 2019, Romanian hunters are asking for the 2016 ban on brown bear hunting to be lifted. According to a BBC report, agricultural workers in Transylvania, the area where all of the attacks have happened, are now refusing to work the land or leave their villages for fear of attack. The Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust has taken the scientific journal The Ecologist to task after it published what they see as a biased article by one kind in the December issue. The article quotes discredited and unreliable research to claim grouse management is too intensive and leads to indiscriminate killing of mountain hares. When the GWCT offered a counter article for publication correcting the inaccuracies and selective commentary, it was rejected by the editor. And finally, fancy a burger grown in a lab from stem cells? That's the latest clean meat solution to be offered by the World Economic Forum. Grown on blades of grass, it's claimed it could help feed the world. Scientists from the University of Bath removed cells from grass stems, then inserted animal stem cells into the mix before growing meat in a lab. Mmm, how lovely. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts, and Happy New Year. Thank you, David. And if you'd like to see more news, there's a link to our website in the description 
below. Next up, Andy Crow has a cautionary tale about cartridges. Don't mix your cartridges and always, always make sure you've got nothing in your pocket. I'll show you why. These are both empty cartridges. I'm going to drop that in there. As you can see, it's empty. It's gone down. That is a 20 ball. That is a 20 ball. So just show me where that's come to. That has come to there. That's at the end of the chamber. All right? Yep. I've got a, a just normal cartridge, 12 ball cartridge. That's gone off, bear in mind. So that would be shorter by that much. That's going in there. And both cartridges are empty, by the way. That's going in there. It goes in there, no trouble at all. You shut your gun up. And that now is there. There you go. Shut. When you pull that trigger, the pressure can't go anywhere. The only way that's going to go is out the side. And if you're holding the gun there like that, that comes out the side, it's going to take that lump off. It won't go up, it'll go out. It happens not on a regular basis, but it's, something, it's an accident that does happen. Um, yeah, it's an accident that does happen. And the other way round is a um, 28 bore and a 20 does exactly the same thing. The 28 bore will go down to the bottom of the chamber and then you stick the 20 bore on top of it, does exactly the same thing. I've changed round guns today. I've religiously emptied my pockets out and checked them probably six, seven times and it just it freaks you out and knowing that that can happen. But and that's why it's better the 20 balls are they're set colours yellow. If you get you look in a bag of cartridges, you see something yellow and you think, whoa, that's not supposed to be in there. But there is some 12 ball cartridges that are yellow, so um, but no. In the heat of the moment, you're grabbing stuff out of your pocket. Oh yeah. Like me down on that that last drive, they were coming out there pretty rapid. And I was just sticking, I was only sticking one cartridge in. And uh, it, 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 you, when you're grabbing cartridges out of your pockets, you, you don't know whether that's a 20. In the heat of the moment, you don't know whether that's a 20 or a 12, and you're just sticking them in. So, but yeah, I, I can't emphasize enough to make sure if you're using different guns, like Matt uses a, he uses a 28 uh, regular, and he, he shoots a 20 as well. Today he's been shooting a 20 all day. It's, it's, it's everyone has got to keep, really be really careful with these cartridges with these changing barrels. Thank you Andy, if only the colour coding was simpler. Now let's go to the best hunting and shooting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. The big hunting film in the last week is on Men's Mag GQ's channel. It's had a million views in five days. Stephen Rinella breaks down hunting scenes from the movies. Back to the real world of hunting and shooting sports, Nick Ridley is walking up pheasants with spaniels in this film. It's the end of December and shirt sleeves weather. Andrew Reynolds hunting asks for a shout out. This is his latest film, Ferreting Rabbits, with a pup from his own breeding. The new one from the South Somerset Ferreters has the out in full Christmas rig catching rabbits. The film is dedicated to a good dog called Buzz who died just before Christmas. Gary Moore recommends Kapina hunting from Finland. Kapina Miko is filling his three moose hunting tags on a driven hunt and accompanied by his young son. Another moose hunting film doing well also in Finland is Swedish channel Nordic Hunting. This one has English subtitles. For international big game hunters this is one of the big ones. In this film American hunter Larissa Switlik completes her Capra World Slam hunting 12 goats of the world. World. This short film rattles you through them. And finally, the US kit testing website Gear Junkie puts up its list of hunting influencers to watch in 2020. Top of it is Clay Hayes. This is his new recurve bow hunting film. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the eye symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that is it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website. There's a link in the description below where you can like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, and of course, best of all, pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you each week about the show. Field Sports Britain, it's at 7pm 
UK time every Wednesday. Plus, you can back us. Go to F channel slash Field Sports Nation. Again, there's a link in the description below where you can find out not only how to do that, but what it means to us when you do do that. I'll see you next week. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing. Happy New Year and goodbye. <laughs>